Hey there everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris Ormi and we are here today with some more Football Manager 2021. This is the Swansea way. Now, things have been going really well and people have sort of accused me of abandoning the Swansea way and I can see why some of our signings did not fit in with what I told you. Um, a, what I told you the Swansea way was, and B, what I told you our version was. C, even what I adapted it into last season. So, yeah, I, I can understand that. I can understand that. Why people are a little, um, a little more upset at things. Um, one thing I will say is, we've gone from a team that had a lot of issues staying fit to being a very, very fit team right now. Uh, morale is through the roof. Everything is going really, really well. Mbappe's got 47 and 55. Maybe not as much as you would expect. Ben Bici, 36 and 49. It is what it is. We're playing well. We're just not playing as well as I think we could. And that's kind of an issue there. So uh, I'm finally going to upgrade which joins into a first-team regular starter. Uh, Munoz is now the only squad player in my first 11, as it were. Uh, that's because Kamavinga will be playing there as a star, usually. So, yeah. Let's, let's give everyone their due and, and let them play how they're supposed to be playing. Like I said, apart from a few issues here and there, I think we're very well set up tactically. I think we're pretty good in terms of depth. Quality starters, good depth, good options off the bench. I don't see any real issues. Training's going like really, really well. Everybody's set up in the roles that I need them. Mentoring's going well. Uh, and as I say, training is pretty impressive. You know, Facey and Bev are the only guys below an 8 rating, or below an 8.4 even. Um, so, yeah, I'm not doing a lot of individual training. I've rested people. I've even rotated the squad quite heavily over the last couple of months. So, uh, since we last played Man City, which will be our opponents in the last, uh, in, in this episode, sorry. Since we, we last played them a couple of times, you know, that that final was decent. That was the first of our hat-trick of hat-tricks from last episode. And then, you know, kind of went into the fifth round of the FA Cup with another strong lineup. Then rotated completely and played Brentford at home with a B team that absolutely smashed it. A couple of late goals to make things look well more in control than perhaps at times we were. But... Nonetheless, we deserved a big win. Uh, and then we went back to the first team and overcame uh, Leicester away. And then we barely managed to get result again with the B team, though, away to Wolves before Real Sociedad with a big win. Middlesbrough away. It's, you know, a cup quarterfinal. I thought, let's play a mix, but keep it a fairly strong side in general. And we got the win. Then Tottenham at home back to the first team. Um, Fulham away. We went kind of off the rails a little bit. We went for the first team and, and kind of got battered um, around a little bit. Troy sent off. Kamavinja injured. Uh, they are related, sadly. And then, again, we, we try and like, get things going. And some of the players not playing great. Mbappe kind of takes the time off. Ben Beachy with an early goal, that got us enough uh, in front early enough to really just to, to see our time. And Man City weren't threatening, so, you know, we kind of didn't push too far forward. We kind of took our foot off the accelerator, just let the game play. Um, and then a little bit more of a rotated squad again. A couple of people rested off. And a couple of early goals from the strikers away to Everton. And Joe Taylor gets an equaliser for them. 
at this point in the league, there are five games left to play. There are a couple of, of interesting fixtures for certain, but 11th at home, 20th away. Man United at home, at least, uh, is at home. Southampton is 14th at home and Brighton 13th away. So, um, good chance to remain unbeaten in the league. We have picked up our two draws. Everything else in every competition has still been a win. FA Cup semi-final against Chelsea, which will be really kind of interesting. And if it will, there we go. If, if we get past Chelsea, which I think we should be able to, um, we've had a lot of tough games against them, but we have what it takes. We know, we know 100% we do have what it takes. So from that point of view, I think, you know, that's a decent draw. And then Wolves or Tottenham in the final, again, I think is decent. Wolves did overcome Arsenal. You've got to give them respect. You've got to, you know, make sure you're not discounting them for nothing. But at the same time, I just feel not the word invincible. Not that we should just be walking in and winning games without really trying. Although my team does seem to think that from time to time. Um, but I do think that we're more than capable of going out and not only winning every game, regardless of uh, location, competition, opposition, of dominating the play and not letting teams realistically have a shot. So... I kind of think that's, um, you know, definitely the FA Cup something we can win. And um, get a second of the three hat-tricks that were available. As you can see here, PSG and Barcelona are through putting out Leipzig and Real Madrid in the process. I'm a bit disappointed. Real Madrid had a nil-nil. At, you know, at, at the camp now. And then... They lost at home to Barcelona, so that didn't go the way I thought it would. Leipzig took a 2-0 lead. And, uh, yeah. They took a 2-0 lead into that second leg and got battered. And it would have been really nice for PSG not to go through there. But it is what it is, I guess. And then we take a 1-0 lead back to this, uh, to this game now. And United are 2 all with Ajax with an eye on the final because it's at Old Trafford. The winner of Ajax, Man United, plays PSG. And once again, if we can overcome Man City, it is Barcelona for us. And then, of course, the winners meet in that final. And again, I think, I think we should be able to beat Man City, like I say, that 1-0 that advantage, even with a poor performance, like should be enough to help us, and we're back at home. Let me beat Chelsea. Then, Champions League semi-final, Barcelona, we've proven that we shouldn't fear them either. We've done well lately, we've done well against them. So, I'm kind of confident about that. Then I think what we will see is going to be interesting. I think we, you know, we finish up the league. We've got an FA Cup final and the Champions League final. If we get through Barcelona, which we should, it's either going to be Yannick Helstead and PSG, or we're going to be playing Man United at Old Trafford, which is really interesting, uh, as what could be, you know. That, that final trophy we need to win, the Champions League, the final game maybe of the series, uh, depending on where the fixtures put them, they normally are the last games. So, yeah, I think there's a lot of interesting things going on there. Um, the hat-trick of Premier League titles is, uh, is signed and sealed right now. Who knows who's going to get second? Looks like Liverpool at the moment. United have that game in hand. They're close. Chelsea are lurking. 
Uh, it's been a fairly competitive season behind us, but we've really run away with this one again. i say those two draws are the only thing this year. Away at Anfield and at home at Brighton, that sucks. Um, I think it hurts less that there's two of them and not just one of them blemishing the record right now. But yeah, we would be 100% right now. We would be technically perfect with how many games left to play. So that's seven. Uh, so it'd be 11 games to play. 11 more wins. And if these two draws were wins, we would then have been perfect. But we're going, as we have said plenty of times before now, we are going and trying to be invincible. The unbeaten. That is where we are. We're setting records. We're setting all kinds of, of win records with you know longest winning streaks in different competitions. In our history, unbeaten streaks, home wins, away wins. We're starting to creep back up after a terrific little run early in the season. Set some of those. We're, up, we're on pace to beat some of those by the end of the season as well. Um, I just... Really digging where the squad is right now. Gijan's up there. Atmosphere's up there. Manjiro support's up there. Great leadership diagram. Everyone's behind me. Two social groups. Basie Cosmo, uh, Cosme Munoz, Vitor, Sant and Bevan. The future. And then the main body there led by our main leaders and our big boys as well. So... Kind of an interesting one for certain. Kind of an interesting one. Uh, Pedri has replaced Erdegaard as a recommended fit. Which could have been interesting, I guess. I guess we could have brought Pedri in. Um, I imagine if we brought in Pedri and Erdegaard, kept Demir, kept Yannick Helstead, got Kai Havertz, got Erling Haaland as well. Oh, we had the money to do all that kind of stuff as well. Um, yeah, everybody's in great mood. Everyone's got a new... Who's got a new contract? Someone got a new contract. Let me... Give me a second. Let me figure this out. Who had a new contract? Was it Munoz? Was it Cosme? I don't know. It wasn't Camavinga. I think it was someone fairly high up in the list. Uh, Starkey's the only one that doesn't really have a new deal i'm not sure someone did have a new deal i know we did vito but that's not who i'm thinking of here not what i'm thinking of ryan hughes wanted by psg and leverkusen want levi towers okay yeah i don't know who it was i don't know who it was um Darkie, I mean, get his claws fiery did up, and that's everybody on 2030. Gotta love that. I was gonna offer him a new deal, but that uh, that clause is perfect to take us back up to maxed out there. Uh, Camavinga's out for a while. I think it was like uh, four weeks ish, like nearly a month. So we're halfway through that. Probably missed the first leg of the semi-final there. But again, we've got what it takes, I think, to move forward without them. And yeah, I'm I'm just really happy. Everything's going well. The board are really happy. Everything looks good. The squad facilities, everything is right up there with the best of the world. 45,000 seats is not a bad place. Uh, and I do believe that is the maximum because we cannot, we cannot do anything with it. And there's very little things to be done right now. We've negotiated a change in an affiliate. Um, we're bringing in more Romanian youngsters through the youth intake. Uh, we've got another affiliate club in. And I believe our youth intake was okay this year, but not great. There were two players... I can't remember their names, but there's one, Tom Jacker, right back. Um, Three-star ability. Doesn't look too bad at all. No downsides, consistency, professional, intelligent team player. 
So Tom Jacker came in and there was a centre back who can't remember who it was, but they're gonna be young and they're gonna be Welsh, and there he is, Matthew Hartson, who actually looks like a decent prospect as well. Um yeah, lots of like lots of like consistency, professional, uh, intelligent as well. So a couple of really nice pros. No cons that we we dislike. Bit of potential in Hartson. Uh Jacker a little bit less potential. But those are the only two that made it in. It doesn't really matter. Everyone here has got a passport of some description. Uh I believe it was Casper. Yeah, Casper has. So yeah, I think everybody has a passport of some kind. Um, I, I, I second guess myself all the time. Not too many like really great youngsters, but we got Taylor Spencer left back. Harson's just come in. Darren Evans and Anthony Devolt as well. Uh, very good. All in defence it seems. Then it looks like a mix of defence and midfielders at four star here. Alexander, Boys, and Raman with Robinson, Young, and Calvert. Uh, Harrison as well in midfield. It's not bad. Maybe it's not what I want it to be. But it's not bad. Let's make Tom Jacques a youngster there because I forgot to do that. Um, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the squad numbers, the talent levels. And again, two star I think is enough to sit on the bench for us, which means we've got another four centre backs we can call up, another left back, two midfielders, an attacking mid, and a striker if we needed to. So, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. And if these boys grow as well in the uh, in the off season to two star, we got 31 more people that technically I'd be happy to run with as squad players in that first team squad. We also got people like Dale, Naismith, Pridham, Milosevsky, Grant, Cooper, Nahimana, and Kingdom, who are already a couple of them are 21. You know, their time is coming. Bunch of two stars, one and a halves that can grow. Um, yeah, this uh, this second team here, the B team, pretty solid. A lot of defenders, decent amount of midfielders, but not too many. And plenty of strikers. Um, yeah, some backup options, possibly. Some four-star players, right back, centre back, attacking midfield. Um, some sort of central midfield and a striker. And we got centre back, attacking midfield, striker. Again, here, four and a half stars. The five stars, the right back, Aaron Joseph. Centre back, Kagri Gerbers. Um, center mid, Georgios, Christiodoulou, George Hood, and Glenn Blackburn. Excited for those, to be fair. Especially Hood and Blackburn. Um, I've, I've been expecting those to come through for a while. It'll be nice to see them. Aaron Joseph had a shot as well at right back. Aaron Hay maybe could be a decent option in attacking midfield. So, we just got options absolutely everywhere. And then, of course, coming in. Um, we're getting a new coach because we have loads more. I downgraded our coaches um, in terms of numbers to fit what the squad uh, best needed. We, we were carrying an extra fitness squad, uh, fitness coach, which we didn't need for the first team squad, and so on. And then, after we won the League Cup final, the board basically said, hey, you can hire another staff member. So I didn't need to sack anybody, it turned out. So we're getting Francesco Salo, who's not amazing, but high reputation. Get another Italian in. It was just quick and easy to do that. But yeah, John Lewis, the goalkeeper, he's coming in January of next season, which means he will never be a part of this save, which is a shame. But I like him. I think he's okay. I don't think he's amazing. Um, yeah, Scott McMillan. Recommended by the scouts. Five star, Scottish, high determination, great pace and dribbling with one so young. It's mental. That's where the, the main sort of issues are going to be and where we need to really train him 
Uh, his preferred moves were fantastic, professional, consistent. You know, lacks a bit of intelligence. Let me say, we need, we need to train that side of his game up. But um, yeah, another great young option, only 15, 6 1. And of course, Carlos Aspria, who at 17 is, is looking really, really well, to be fair. And is on the cusp of getting us. We will we'll get another scout report on him and on John Lewis just to see. But yeah, Lewis doesn't look great. McMillan looks really solid. Aspria looks very, very good. Um, yeah, these two are coming in. McMillan, not too far away. Nobody going out just yet. And we can sell on Yannick Helstead and his release clause. So, okay. They say 15. So basically, we're looking at about 200 million. Do we think someone's going to buy Yannick Helstead for 200 million? Because if we think it's more than that, then, yeah, I, I guess we shouldn't sell. He doesn't look as good as I, I remember him. Am I misremembering him, perhaps? I know his finishing was an 11. That's gone up dramatically, to be fair to him. I think he left us at 13, maybe 14, but I think at 13. I don't know. I don't know, but we can sell that if we want to. I think I'm going to. I think I'm going to. They're not going to sell him for a while. It doesn't really matter, but yeah. Don't think they get that money. So with all that being said, that roundup of where we are in the save, the state of the save as it was. Uh we're gonna go into this game. Vitor in goal, Facian joins on the flanks, Cosme and Delete at the back. As you can tell by the squad numbering, it is my favoured backline and goalkeeper. Up front, Beachy playing off Mbappe and uh Joe Reyna in the hole. Again, squad numbers you'll be able to see. That's my favorite personnel. Uh, Cook and Rice. I've swapped round from left to right, but they are my starters. There's a fairly strong um, weak foot and a reasonable foot. I tend to switch them kind of frequently. They've been playing well here, but I will go back here. Number 11 on the left, number 7 on the right. A little bit of a traditionalist with my numbers. And of course, Munoz is the only guy who steps in. Uh, to that starting lineup that wasn't there at the start of the season. And to be fair, my number six is Camavinga, who would be there if fit. Uh, I believe Vitor has got his first Brazilian cap and got his second as well this season. So on the cusp of a clean sheet record as well, I believe. Um, so yeah, he's looking fantastic and playing really well. I think a couple of others have played for their country throughout the lineup as well. Uh, Starkey for Wales, I'm pretty sure. But I've drip fed people's games, haven't I? Where were we last time? I think quite a few people were low on games. Levi Towers has played eight games. He's going to get a run in um, with the first team in the Premier League now that those games are slightly less important. And if we're not looking to win every game, if we can draw some then I don't mind playing him. Ramsden's going to get some starts there as well. He may even start every Premier League game from here on. I'll get him 10 games. Levi Tell was just below 10, and Ryan Hughes is now on 10. Apart from that, you can see Matthews and Bevan playing a lot off the bench. Tom Ferry, um, small amounts, but decent game time. Starkey's actually done quite well, and Mepham has just been a solid backup option, and Gladly he's okay with that, but yeah, you know, just haven't really found much, much room for some of these boys. Richmond's played decent amount, and then you're up into the first team numbers. With the one that surprises me is Michael Sant, but my assistant loves him in midfield, which is why Cook has less game time, which is why Declan Rice has less game time uh, than they probably should. So, yeah, he likes playing Camavinga, Sant, and Munoz as a midfield trio. 
I don't hate it. I'm not really there with it though. And I think when we look at the the team as a whole and the first eleven we can put out today and we can put out in general with Kamavinga in there, Bevan dropping out and sliding Munoz in. We're, we're so deep, we're so good. Lewis Cook back into the team in for Sant. Richmond at right back's another move the assistant likes to make. Um, but Mitch joins, comes back in. We're confident about the uh, structured shape. So Munoz, Rice and Cook, the midfielders like the structure. Familiarity from uh, the strikers attacking midfield to my front three. And all but, all but Cosme in the back line. They are familiar. So not sure about Cosme then. Everybody else is represented in these apart from Cosme. And Lewis Cook, please be back in the team as we said. So let's head on over to the stadium. With a 1-0 advantage as we face down a decent team. Donnarumma, Pereira, Ruben Diaz, Laporte, Aaron Hickey at left-back, Taliso de Jong, Phil Ford and Bernardo Silva, Kevin De Bruyne and Wilfred Nonto. A solid bench again, Guedes. Kind of always plays well against me. The lap and Isaac off the bench kind of, you know, does scare me, but yeah, I think we're okay. I think we're okay. Okay, point. Finger. Brand new match. There we go. Seems to have gone down well. Rain is pleased. Everyone else is motivated with that. Ben Beachy is composed. Get a little pumping going on. Ben not looking his best right now. But everyone else is motivated. Starkey on the bench as well. But these are our lineups today. We are absolutely, absolutely going to smash them. Today. Got to. We've got to. Okay. So, yeah, we will see how this game goes. But 1-0 advantage to us. We're at home. And I think player for player, I do indeed back us. I don't think they're better um, anywhere than us. Maybe, maybe centre midfield a touch, but not by much. Mbappe really lazy. Oh, Rice can't quite get there. Okay, that's a foul. It's on the edge of the area. I don't think that's a penalty. It might be, but I think it was just outside the area. Good from Amazalas. Nice and early. Declan Rice and Lewis Cook really doing well patrolling those flanks. And then... Yeah, Mbappe didn't look... Amazing. To be fair. Peach at least was making runs forward. Build a man more. Gio Reyna with a free kick. Puts it towards Mbappe. Munoz will clear up here. Back to the back line. And we can play our way out. And try and get back in position I guess. Quite quiet. But Reyna now with a corner. Ball up to Ben Beachy. Steals half a yard on the defenders. Can't quite get there. Gio Reyna towards the back post this time. Rice is out jumped. Cosme steps up the Brazilian. Back to Munoz. And Matsi delict. Back all the way to Carlos Vitor. Let's not take our risks. Wait for the striker to come forward. Up to Cosme. Find the open man, which is face yet wide. And back inside and up to Reina. Here we go. That's nice. And Bappe steals a yard on the defender and slots it into the bottom corner. Let's go. Killian Mbappe. Let's go. Oh, there's the fans. Let's go. Let's go, boys. Lovely ball there. Mbappe's woken up. And a calm finish just inside the post. Slots it past the striker. Killian Mbappe. 2-0 over the tie now. 1-0 on the day, of course. Bernardo Silva gets booked and another Reina corner. Will this pressure A 
Beachy heads it, it doesn't go on target, and Mbappe tries to steal in and just touch at the uh, far post from the header. Can't quite get it past the post, however. And it looks like probably going to play our way through the halftime without too much more. De Bruyne up towards De Jong, Laporte, De Ligt gets in the way, and Mitch joins, puts it up near touch, and uh, up to the halfway point. Not too bad. Not what I wanted to see from us in general. I think we've... Now, we've not looked amazing, but again, Man City have looked kind of toothless in place. I think they've had a throw-in in a corner. That's been about it. We're definitely in control. We're playing well. Um, but we're not playing well enough for me not to be slightly concerned. So, point the finger. I'm not happy. I'm not happy. Pump the fists. You got what it takes, boys. You do have what it takes. And I'm disappointed in the strikers. There we go. Little encouragement for the boys, I think, that coming into the second half. Dangerously playing it round the back there at times. But I like us playing it round the back, but sometimes it looks a lot worse than other times. Up to Mbappe now. Into Ben Bici, unfortunate. Mbappe, though, does well. Back to Declan Rice. Oh, my God. That would have been spectacular. That would have been spectacular. Okay, we're going to try a little change in tactics. We're actually going to focus down, down the width and hit the early crosses. Because this is something I've done in my other save to pretty good effect, to be honest. And I'm going higher, higher on our lines as well. I think we're very effective at wide. It just takes us a little too long to get there sometimes. Let's see how how quick we can get the ball at wide. Here, it's very quick. basically has got what it takes to get past. He can cut inside. He can lay the ball off and we can work it wherever we need to go. Rice, Rice didn't go himself there through the middle. But he does play it out to Cook. And it's the second goal... Which I'm very pleased about. But here I thought Rice is going to hit it. No. Worst place. And then kind of pedestrian. No real pressure from Man City at the back. Cook's got time to get it out of his feet. Take the extra step. Work his way into the box. And then just slams it into the top corner. Well in control of this game now. 15 minutes left to play. Declan Rice is absolutely tired. That is fine. Robert Bevan will come on in the stead. Munoz becomes a Mizala. Because I've realized I quite like Bevan here. Uh, as a little bit more of a defensive player. He's got good marking. His tackling's really good. Decent positioning. He could be a good Mizala. But I think a little bit of a ball winning deep line playmaker in that center spot. I think that's maybe where he suits more so. Uh, he can still play on the ball. He's been trained in Azamizala a lot, so he can play on the ball for sure. But I kind of like him there, and that frees up Munoz a little bit more, where, you know, he's definitely a little more creative. Maybe not as quick, maybe not as good in places, but yeah. Um, we've seen him do big things. So let's get the tired man Declan Rice off. Worst performers are Mitch Jones at right back and Ben Beachy up front. I could just bring on James Matthews there, I think would be okay. And why not Jones? Let's get a, a bit more pace. Fresher legs on that right side. Let's get Tom Ferry on. I'm happy with that right back change. Got a striker change. We've got a midfield change. Ball in. Reina to Cook. Back to Facey. The licked. Cook. Reina out wide. Driving in on the angle. Good save. Very good save there. Well done, keeper. 
But um, it will be another corner. Gio Reyna. Matthews at the far post. He can't get there. De Bruyne. Can he hold this up or can he go? He's going to go down, down the touchline. But no. No, Ferry's not playing games. He's not playing games. Absolutely not. But yeah, Donnarumma with a great save there from Gio Reyna. Reyna into Bevan. Out the face. He back up to Reyna. Got time. Cuts his way inside. Dribbles past the man and puts it wide. Yeah, Reyna being a little bit selfish now. Players in the box can go out wide and get the job done. Ball up there to Munoz. It's cleared to Osrokara, but Cosme up. Bevan wins that. Hickey wins, but there's Ferry. Tom Ferry. Nice, simple ball back. We play it to Bevan. Poor ball to the lick. It's going to have to come all the way back, but at least we do not lose possession. Bevan to De Ligt, to Cook, to Munoz. And what looked like a very good press by Man City is undone now. Munoz with an absolute thunderbolt. Oh my God, are you kidding me? Nice to meet you. Juan Carlos Munoz. Oh my God. First team playing absolutely unbelievable stuff at the back to get out of trouble. A little disjointed in places up front. But top bins from Munoz there, just what a strike. We pushed him forward towards the end of this game. And he has shown why that was a good idea to do. Man City took this with such a good team. They end up with Isaac up top, De Bruyne and Guedes up wide. Phil Foden and De Jong in front of Tolisso protecting that back four where Godfrey slotted in alongside Ruben. And Donnarumma in net. 16 shots, only 5 on target. We didn't play amazingly, but we did score 3 of those. Cook, top corner. Munoz, top corner. Mbappe, a cross goalie, lower corner, just inside the post. Um, yeah, dominant performance. A dominant performance that I'm very happy with, Lewis Cook. Club captain showed up today, led the team. A lot of people are wondering why he's kind of still in the lineup when... I've got people like Bevan, I've got people like Sant, I've got people like Munoz. He's 29. He, I should be selling him. His value's at an all-time high. I like the way he plays. Him and Declan Rice, in theory, should be defensive midfielders. But the way I've trained them, the way we play them, the way the tactics suit some of their attributes, as Mizala's, it works, and it works well. So, yeah, why would I want to change too much? Um, BG didn't do much. Joins had to get taken off. So, yeah. Uh, good performance, boys. Just, that's it. Good performance. Lewis Cook. Very good. Thank you, Cap. Thank you. Um... Yeah, what a result. What a result. And Man United go through against Ajax. Justin Kluivert gets a consolation goal at 4-0 down after Fernandes, Haaland, Odegaard and Greenwood score. And then, just after Kluivert, the, the nail in the coffin comes from Rashford. Both Manchester clubs in action. One of them makes it through today. But what a What a game. What some goal scoring power. That's unbelievable. Okay, so we're going to play Barcelona in the semi final. United play PSG. As I say, United, if they make it to the final, will be at home. Um, Barcelona, don't know if I fear them. I really don't. Jao Felix is great. Fati is great. Um,. Demir, of course, is there. Pedri, Havertz. Ariba wants out, but it's very good for them if they do keep him. And a solid back line. They've, you know, they've got the fullbacks from North America, Davis and Dest. They've got a good back line. Still got to Stegen in goal. I don't think they're as good as they used to be, for certain. And Leo Messi, I mean, 38, but he's just not got the physicality he just doesn't have the physicality 
So, yeah, he's only played a handful of games this season. Um, I don't fear them. PSG, I fear a little bit more. They got the Fontaine goals, which isn't the best, but not bad. Garcia Kimpembe is decent. Uh, Tierney and Hakimi, okay. Very solid midfield. I think that's where they come alive with some big, big players. Neymar on a free transfer at the end of the season, apparently. But um, still looks good. 34-year-old. Conchisau, Chiesa, Betancourt, Trenchao. Um, very, very good players. Danny Olmo, Kulusevsky as well. Harry Kane, Yannick Helstead, and Gauthier Roussel. Um, yeah, I'm not worried about the youngster, but the other two quite good. Harry Kane is centre mid for some reason. For some reason. But yeah, it's, it's that midfield that I really fear. You put Helstead up front, you've got Trinch out, you've got um, Ponce Sao, and you've got Kulusevsky as your midfield three behind him. And then you're solid elsewhere to get the job done. So, good team with a very good attack and Man United. For me, it's all about two players and two players really running this team. You got your Norwegians, Erdegaard and Haaland, just unbelievable players. They run this. They run this. Uh, Greenwood and Rashford out wide, very dangerous. Martial off the bench, uh, good midfield. Fernandez, Van der Beek, Pogba, Sander Burge, solid backline, not amazing but very solid, and still got the hair. So, yeah, they're good sides. I think PSG are probably the best of, of the teams left. Then United, and then Barcelona with that declining Lionel Messi. Fierce, he wants a rest. He will get it over the next couple of games. Praise directness, because that's what I'm looking for. Go. That's why Fierce, he will get it over the next I didn't actually click the button. And I should. I should. Next couple of weeks. Uh, I don't know. I'll manage it myself. I won't promise anything. It's not going to hurt us not to promise. So yeah, that's where we are right now. I think we got, yeah, three days to Chelsea. And a few people are really tired. So I'm going to give these boys two days off training. Because that will help. Just keep my midfield fit. And then... Yeah, they should be... They should all be okay. We'll take a look in a day and see where they're at training-wise. Where they maybe uh, will be looking. So, the Premier League fixture is pushed now towards the end of the season against United. Because of the Champions League stuff. going to mean that we need to set up slightly differently with our training as this week is now compromised we got match tactics already so let's go just with the teamwork in there we got shadow plays we got a lot of stuff um yeah i don't think we need the the extracurriculars to be fair so let's keep those out for now so. that up match review let's spread these out a little bit get our stuff set up yes a bit of team bonding there, community outreach there. In fact, let's yeah, see, we're right on the cusp of being too much. Right on the cusp of. Ah. Uh, I think that's going to be good enough. Player match tactics, we can do a teamwork. How are we gonna do this? 
just think we're going to be over by what I want to do. So again, I don't think physical is really what I want to go towards this end part of the season. It's just too much. Set it up for possession instead. Much easier training week. And that just means I, I can set things up a lot better. It's a lot better, believe me. Okay, let's get our team bonding out early there. Let's get... The outreach there. Match tactics. Ball attention, ball distribution and play from the back. There we go. That's a nice week of training there. Nice and light. Recovery, go watch the match. And uh, our performance back. Boys go for a little bit of a bonding session. Then it's possession. Then it's just all decent training here to be fair. Teamwork and match tactics, bit of community outreach, match preview into that game. I think that fits pretty well what we're doing. I think it does. But yeah, the FA Cup semi-final. We've got to win that. And there we go, new Champions League record. 18 wins in a row there. Fully in command of the game against Man City. They kind of woke up. Before half time, second half, they did absolutely nothing. We just completely destroyed them and didn't let them play. We bossed the midfield. So, really pleased with that. I think, you know, the midfield are stepping up and scoring goals. So, happy with that. Very happy with that. Sharky, contract extension. And, yeah, everybody's. Pretty much going to be okay for Chelsea then in that case. So, that being said, we're not going to play Chelsea, of course, in this one. This is getting on. Um, did that just move again? I think it just moved from Monday the 11th all the way to the 15th, which gives us very little time before that Brighton game. That's the league game. Yeah, that's the league game. So we can kind of rotate there. As long as we're fit enough for Brighton, I think I can play who I want at Man United. And we've got a big gap to United from Barcelona. So it's not too bad. It's not too bad. It's a little tight in places. That's annoying, but I think this run in looks good enough. And of course, Champions League and FA Cup will come right at the back end of the season, same as last year, where 24th and 31st. Yeah, if it's the same way, it'll be a week after the end of the Premier League season and a week after that for the other... Yeah, absolutely fine. Not an issue whatsoever then in terms of fixtures or anything else. I'm quite happy. We're resting a few players. They'll be back ready for Chelsea. We're going to have to wait on a couple of names. I might rotate out one or two players. Um, I'm probably going to go for the first team because we've got a big gap now for them to rest before the league game where the B team is going to play anyway i think we might be playing the first team here and okay so yeah virginio sanchez 33 clean sheets vito's on that plenty of chances to beat that before now and the end of the season but if we are giving the game time to ramsden in goal in the premier league that kind of limits the games now to five that Vito would have because he'd have the Champions League semi final double leg. This FA Cup semi first is game three. 
and then both finals if we progress through these two so maximum of five games to get another clean sheet to set a new record that was only set last season by sanchez who apparently also isn't good enough to play for atletico madrid so you pay 102 million and you don't play that goalkeeper i mean to be fair all black is fantastic but yeah i don't understand that move diego blasco is at least getting game time since we sold him over there but it's it just puzzles me this game it really does it really does but yeah sanchez great goalkeeper vito great goalkeeper two years younger maybe slightly better and has the potential to maybe get even better again i don't know i'm, I'm very happy with how everything is going calvert lewin is still uh still playing quite well for chelsea in fact he's he's been there a while now i'm, I'm playing quite well regularly those two seasons i didn't expect him to stay long but he's one of the ones that did Gotta give him credit. He's you know scoring ten league goals a season consistently through Arsenal and Everton as well. Back to 2020, of course. First season in game, big season. That prompts Arsenal to spend the money, and then he regresses back to his kind of ten a season form. That's what he hit for us. We thought that's good, but it's probably not good enough. Take a tiny loss on him, send him to Chelsea, and again. Solid but unspectacular play from him. 22, 20, 15 for us. 13, 20, 21 in all competitions. So, yeah, just not as amazing as his stats probably should dictate, if I'm being honest. But a very solid striker and former player means he could come back to haunt us. Yeah, you don't love that, obviously. We don't love that. But, um, yeah, that's where I'm going to leave the video in that case. And, um, yeah, let me know what you thought of everything. How the team is playing. I don't think we're as good as we can be. But at times we look amazing. And at times I think um, I've made a mistake up front with these signings. I'd like to hear your opinions on that. I'd also like to hear your opinions on the transfers we had out as well. And whether it was right or not to keep or sell who we did. And predictions. Can we finish this season unbeaten? Will we be invincible? So, leave all that comment section down below. I'll see you next time. Hit that like button. Smash that subscribe if you already have for more content on this and more but yeah take care stay safe i'll see you soon i wish you all the best and i'd appreciate your good wishes too we've got a few games left and history to be made i hope we can do it i hope you come back to watch it too i'll see you then